שלום. It is, uh, it is uh, definitely my decision that I should say a few more words regarding the situation in the land of Israel, modern Israel, of course, in our, in, in our country. We see what's happening. There are so many questions. What's going on? One day we feel as though, I mean, I'm talking about uh, Jews who are believers in God. So we feel that one day we feel as though the redemption is coming, the Mashiach is coming. The next day we are disappointed. Things seem to be worse and worse. Now the war against Hamas is going on. And definitely we, we suffer very much whenever we hear that one soldier, two soldiers have fallen. There's no question about it that every Jew feels terrible. Even though most of us do, do not know them, nevertheless, it does not matter. I already spoke about this just last week or two weeks ago, that the difference between the Jewish people and the other nations is that the Torah calls the Jewish people, even when you quote them by numbers, they are still known as nefesh achat, one single soul, versus the other nations, does not matter, the number does not matter, but the Torah calls them nafshot beto. All you have to do is go to Parashat Vaishlach and you will find it. Nafshot souls in the plural. Why? The difference is because the Jews always believed in one God. But the nations did believe or still believe in different kinds of gods. Of course, you could ask me the question, what about the nation of Ishmael? They believe in one God. It is true. The problem is, in accordance with the teachings of the Rambam, that in fact, even though they, whatever they do is uh, in the name of God, Allah Akbar, nevertheless, it's the wrong way. There's no question about it. Because in the name of God, they are allowing themselves to do the most atrocious, the most horrible acts of cruelty that has no equal in the annals of the world. And that had to be, had to be falling upon us. When on the day of October 7th, the day of Simchat Torah, which fell on Shabbat, we have seen something that it is so terrible that we prefer not to know about it. When thousands of terrorists of Hamas found out that nobody is watching. That's the best time to attack Israel. And they came in full force. Nobody stopped them. Usually, even if one gets closer to the, to the, to, I mean, to the fence. Immediately there is a reaction by the army of Israel, but that day there was no reaction. I mean, they came with such power, that's unbelievable. So many armaments, so many weapons. All this has been prepared months before. This was a plan to come and kill and slaughter the Jewish people altogether just because they are Jews. The most terrible thing happened there in the frontier of Aza, that which, which we call Otef Aza. And they slaughtered innocent people, babies, women, old women, 
old men, whoever they found, they just killed, and killed in the most horrible way. And they were laughing. One of them even called on the phone, his own mother telling her, I killed with my own hands 10 Jews. And what was the react, what was the, the answer on the phone? His mother is telling him or, or his father, God bless you, go on. Well, that's with whom we are confronted. That's the type of enemy. There is only one problem. Yes, apparently we were asleep. What happened to us? Nobody knows the answer to this question. Usually there is no one that, has, that succeeds to come, to come and, 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 and break the, the fence. It's impossible. That day everything happened? Well, for a believer like me, I believe in God with all my heart. I have no doubts whatsoever. And there are many like me. All those they know this is an act of God. Otherwise, don't try, don't, don't start looking for the, the one that is responsible for that. We know who is responsible. There is no question about it. Of course, we cannot say it openly, but I take now the responsibility of saying it because the, ex the exaggeration is already reaching the maximum. Because now in the midst of the war in which we are already a hundred days, that's when those people who started all this, and I am going to explain, now again, again we hear about them starting to demonstrate again and to blame and they keep they are the ones who are saying that we have to find out who is responsible for that prime minister this general this uh, lieutenant we have to look for them and find out who is responsible for the massacre who is responsible it is very clear to anybody who believes a little in God. He knows who is responsible. Who is responsible? You. You are responsible. For eight months you did not stop your demonstrations in full force with such cruelty, with such hatred. I hope you know what I, who, about whom I'm talking about. Yes, they were demonstrating they even, and the, their hatred for the Torah and the people who are learners of Torah and they keep the commandments, they, they, they show that they, they hate them. Something is bothering them. What do you want from them? They went into Bnei Brak, an innocent city just because this city is populated with people who learn Torah day and night. They came by the thousands with such aggression that is immoral. I'll never forget one of the incidents. As you know, the people of Nebra came to welcome them. We are, we are brothers. And they gave them fruits and things and, and, and cakes. And there was one girl from the, you know, a religious girl. And she came also with a few good things and she came to two ladies, old ladies from that uh, kind of people. And she said to them, we are brothers. You know what was the answer of those two uh, ladies? I mean, with white hair. They said to her, what is this? You call us your brothers? No, please, don't humiliate us. You are not our brother. What is this? Jews are brothers. 
The Jewish people exist for so many years, 3,300 years and more. Just because the Jew is definitely part of the other Jew. The Talmud says, Israel Arevim Zebeze. Jews are into one another. How is it possible that these people are definitely do not prove that? But the other part, we hurt in our heart to see such a thing because we want them to be our brothers. But it's impossible. They, they, they don't want. What they want is one thing. Supremacy over the land of Israel. Why? Because we deserve to be the leaders of, the, of Israel. But why? Democracy. I mean, there was a, definitely an election that was according to the laws of democracy. And now you, you did not win. So what happened? Why is it with such an aggressive way? It's like Satan himself has, a, invest, has, has, has he, he went into their hearts. Something so immoral that's unbelievable. And then what happened is known. They are looking for people who are responsible for the catastrophe that befell the Jewish people on the day of Simchat Torah and Shabbat. Don't look for, uh, for, for those who committed, I mean, who did not care or whatever you can call it. Don't look so much for it. You are the ones who are responsible for what happened. Because Hamas was listening. Our enemies are listening to everything that's happening among us. And for a long time, they were watching us. They were watching your demonstrations. And not only your declaration of hatred against the other side, against the Knesset, against the Prime Minister Netanyahu, so they decided this is, this is the best time. Let us attack them. That's the best time. Because they hate each other. Now there is no unity among the Jewish people. We can win. Hamas were so enthusiastic about it that they did not even pay attention to the advice of whatever nation, the Arab nations, to, to wait a little or something. No, 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 no. They went by themselves. They said, we can win because now there is no unity. Who caused such an atrocity? If not our own people whom we call leftists. I'm sorry. I'm not afraid to say it. In the Knesset, they are afraid. They know the truth. We heard it. We know everybody is, is saying that the one who is responsible is them. You don't have to look for him. who is the one who is responsible. Don't look for the prime minister. That's not true. He didn't do anything, the poor guy. You did it. Because of you, it happened. After the demonstration, you showed your vicious heart against the Torah. People wanted to pray in Tel Aviv outside, and so many assembled to do so. And that was a terrible reaction by this kind of people. On Yom Kippur. No, we don't want Yom Kippur. We don't want Torah. We don't want. And then, unfortunately, what happened on Simchat Torah, with this kind of uh, feast, or call it whatever you want, that's when the atrocity and the, the cruelty of our enemies became so clear, no compassion at all. They are not human beings, those people. And you know what I, who, about whom I'm talking about. But I think the, those who caused it are more responsible. Why? Because Hamas and all our enemies are only vessels in the hands of God. God is using them because we are not doing the right thing. And whatever causes 
The anger of God is when he sees that there is a lack of unity. Especially if it is associated with such humiliation of the Torah and the Jewish religion. So that's what happened. Otherwise, the real enemy is inside, not outside. Unfortunately, we cannot declare those words openly in the Knesset, even though they know the truth. Why? Because they can always tell you that's spiritual, that has nothing, that's religious. Well, explain whatever you want. We know what it is, and you know, we know very well that it is your responsibility, you people. The problem is now, the war started, you all know, right? It's already three months that we are in that, in that kind of war. And Tzahal, the great army of Israel, is doing extraordinarily well. Our heroes, God bless them. But at the same time, it does not seem to end. The fierce enemy that we have, that we are pursuing, we didn't come to him yet. It's taking longer time. In the meantime, what, what's happening? Again, the reaction of those, the same people who have done what they have done, they started again. And with such vicious language, it's unbelievable. They call the Prime Minister Menuval. What's going on? This is terrible. In the meantime, the situation is worsening. Let me go to the parasha of Shemot. At the end of the parasha of Shemot, we know that God came to Moses and he said to him, I chose you to be the redeemer of the Jewish people from the slavery in Egypt. Okay, there was a discussion and Moshe and Aharon, his brother, they went together to speak to Pharaoh. As soon as they spoke to Pharaoh to liberate the Jews, Pharaoh became even worse than before. And he said, no, I'm going to make sure that their slavery will, will be much more painful, double the pain. Let it be now heavier and bigger and worse. Moshe was disappointed. He came back to God and he said, God, I don't understand. Why did you worsen the situation of the Jewish people? Because since the day when I went to Pharaoh, it became worse and worse for the Jewish people and the suffering became just impossible to describe. Apparently no one is allowed to speak this way to God. And for one minute or so, God showed that you should not talk to me this way. And that's why in the very beginning of the parasha of Vaera, it says, Vaidaber Elokim. Whenever it says Vaidaber, it's a harsh way. It means God is angry. Especially when it is associated with the name of God, Elokim. Elohim is Midat din the measure of harshness. However, in the same verse, you see that suddenly the anger of God has been attenuated. Vayomer Ela, Vayomer is already uh, an expression of compassion. And he said to him, with love, Ani Hashem. Now it's not Elohim, it's Hashem. Hashem Yudke Bavke is the name of God which is the name of compassion and kindness. Which means that God has to show that that's not the way you talk to him. But at the same time, this is exactly what he wants Moshe to say. That's why he loves Moshe and that's why he chose him, because he saw the heart of Moses. Only God can see exactly what's, what's going on in the heart of human beings, as it says in the book of Shemuel, of Shemuel uh, the first chapter, where it says, Ha'adam ve'ashem Man can see only with his eyes, but God sees the heart. And he sees that Moses is speaking to him this way. 
But the heart is pure. It's pure and full of love for the Jewish people. And that's the reason why God said, not only, even though I had to show you some kind of anger, but in fact, this is exactly what I want your reaction to be. There is something that I want to uncover and reveal to you. Throughout my studies, I have seen in the book of Rabbeinu Bachia. He was a disciple of the Ramban, more than 800 years ago. A great Kabbalist and a great commentator on the Torah. And watch what he says. I'm going to quote in Hebrew and translate in, in English. Moshe Rabbeinu enomit onen al Hashem. In reality, Moses was not complaining to God. He trusts Hashem. Ela sho'el lama garam Hashem shetit kaber asin'a le'am Yisrael ve'era lo'od. I mean, he turns to God and he says, all I want is that please explain to me why is it that the hatred against the Jewish people became worse and worse when you sent me. Ve'ashem onelo, and God answers to him. Ki hara'at matzavam hi kedeh le'achish et ge'ulatam. When you see that I, am, that I cause the situation to become worse and evil, that's when, watch, this is only for the purpose to hurry up the, their redemption. And indeed, talking about the Jewish people in, in Egypt, they were supposed to stay as slaves for 400 years as God swore to Abraham, our father Abraham, and he said to him, I want you to know that your great-grandchildren will have to be enslaved. And we already explained very well why the slavery and the, uh, watch our, our the, the discourses of a few weeks ago, when I explained why they had to be enslaved. I don't want to go back on that. So they had to spend 400 years in Egypt. But then when, he, when Hashem saw that the Jewish people are suffering more than what he expected them to suffer, he wanted them to be indeed slaves in Egypt, but not to suffer that much. I mean, we know exactly what, what, what they went through by Paro, the king of Egypt. So God is the only one who is capable of calculating the proper way. How can I minimize now the time of their slavery because of the uh, intensity of the suffering? And he calculated and he found that he can remove 190 years, exactly like the, the number of Kuf Tzadik, Ketz, which is 100, tzaddik is 90, 190. Remove 190, all they have left is 210 years. Time for redemption. So, Rabbeinu Bachia says, so we understand now, the situation became worse because they were close now to their redemption. And then Rabbeinu Bachia says the following, unbelievable. The same thing will happen in the, in, in the future redemption. When the Redeemer, the last one, will appear to the Jewish people, you know what will happen? That's when you will see that the the hatred of all the nations against the Jewish people will become intense, much more than any time before. And here is what, what will happen, apparently. Someday, we might feel, ah, the, the redemption is closed and the, the Redeemer is coming. The next day, we are disappointed, nothing happened. However, Rabbeinu Bachia said, 
וכאשר יתקרב הקץ, but when the, the real time of the Messiah is coming, תהיינה צרות רבות ומתחזקות. There will be many problems and troubles for the Jewish people, and they will be intensified, which means bad. But pay attention, he says, Vehu siman aishu ale Israel. But that's the sign of the final salvation of the Jewish people. That's some kind of revelation. What makes situation worse is our own people, those from that side who do not believe in the Torah and they do not believe in Judaism. It's very, very excruciating, very much. It's also alarming. Because of them, we don't know how bad we, the situation will be. But at least we can content ourselves with what we said now, that since the situation is now, see, watch what happened in Hague. In where? In the center of justice. Oh, and you know what? We, the Jewish people, those who were the victims, because now it is clear that our enemies, they wanted to practically, they want, they want to kill us, but not because of Israel or the land. Don't believe that. There's nobody that can lie like, like the, them, Hamas, etc. Nobody that likes better than them. They lie, they lie. Oh my God, whatever they say, you cannot trust at all. So, let them do whatever they want. We know that the Jewish people, who, especially those who believe in God, will see the last word. But we want, we deplore the fact that many of our own people, not only they are causing all the problems, but they are delaying the redemption to come upon the Jewish people. Because Hashem wants everyone, bad or good, to be together, to be united. When there is no unity, like now they are doing it again, it's terrible. No unity, that's a time again to, the, to, to be worried that things might get worse and worse. However, we pray to the Almighty God that things will come somehow to a happy conclusion for the Jewish people because Jewish people have suffered enough. Amen.